Hey there, this is Jonathan, and in the following tutorial we're going to take a quick look at how people write and format text for the web, and we're going to look at some options for actually formatting text as well. Now, usability.gov is an excellent website to check out first. They have an excellent article on writing for the web, which really tells us the basic reasons about why we write this way. And why it matters is their first, or at least second, headline that they have. And the reason it matters um, is because people don't read anymore. In fact, Jacob Nielsen did a study where people read, on average, about 28% of the words on a page. And he says even 20% is more likely. That's not a lot. People tend to scan things. And so people scan things based upon what they want to achieve. So it's very important that you identify what your user's top tasks are. By figuring out what the users are trying to accomplish, you can put content on the page, which is a little bit easier for them to go through. And that content should be user-friendly. And this is what they're talking about here. You want to use words that your users would use. You want to put it into their language. You want to make it somewhat easy to read. doesn't mean that it can't be technically oriented, especially for summaries and things like that, but it needs to be accessible. Chunking your content means putting it into groups that have headings and other things like that, such as this is a chunk, um, which is how to write user-friendly content, and you can see that all that stuff below it is related. Um, you can see uh, next thing is front-loading the important information. This means using the inverted pyramid approach, which says start out with the most important things and then give um, more details as you go down the page. Pronouns and the active voice are about how you write for somebody to read individually. It's um, directly to them. Short sentences and paragraphs are important because people don't like to read really long paragraphs anymore. Bullets and numbered lists are excellent, such as the bullet list that's up here. Now, there is a difference between bullets and a numbered list. Bullets are those things that are not really numbered. But if I said, let me give you the five top tasks to help you identify such and such, then you would probably use a numbered list. Clear headlines and subheads, once again, are very, very helpful. Um, you'll see that they're everywhere when you come to these types of web pages. Images, diagrams, and multimedia are great on the page. And then white space allows um, a little bit more legibility to the page as well. Um, some of these go into some formatting rules, which basically say the same thing, but in a slightly different way. Here's where they talk about the upside-down pyramid approach, keeping their content concise, simple language, so same stuff. But here they have using headers, um, using researched keywords, which I think are very important, um, and then also bold text and italic text, which is very important as well. Bold text is excellent for individual words, keywords, that you want somebody to be easily able to scan, possibly even a short phrase. Italics would usually be used for things like book titles or maybe catchphrases, taglines, unique phrases, um, maybe a sentence, but you don't want to use too much of it. And links or hyperlinks are the links that are within the content, like here, that give you more information about something. Now you'll see that task analysis and analyze metrics are kind of keywords, so that's a good thing to actually make into a contextual, what is called a contextual link. A non-contextual link is where you might say, to go to find out more information about um, task analysis, go here. That just doesn't work in today's online world. Now what we're really trying to do is not create documents that look like this. This is the MLA research paper where people use big long paragraphs that are indented at the first. That is not the way to write for the web. And it's really not the way that business applications or business documents are formatted as well. Here's an example of a web page that happens to be for the program, digital media program. And you can see it uses these simple formatting rules. It has pretty easy to understand um, leading paragraph and the headings are pretty clear. Every once in a while we have ordered lists or unordered lists. Those things that are links are a different color and of course link to more information. And then you can see some bold elements here that um, are the applications that we use. And here are some actual ones over here. Actually, there's a little mistake. Yikes! Well, 
we make mistakes sometimes. So what we're going to learn here is we're going to take some text and I want you to find the text that you're supposed to format and we're going to copy and paste this text into a couple applications to format the text. The first application that we're going to open up is Microsoft Word because this is really common. Now if you don't have Microsoft Word there's also OpenOffice which is an excellent piece of software and it works very similarly. Let's copy it. I guess I should go back to that page there. Dun, dun, dun. Here it is. First what we want to do is select all of it and then you can right click and choose copy or you can use control C which is the quick way of doing it. And I encourage you to, you, to learn control C and control V because you'll do it a lot. So control C, then you go to the page and you can either right click and paste, I think, yeah, right here is paste with source formatting and a couple different options. But if you just paste, that's fine, or you can just do control V. It doesn't really matter what it comes in with because we're going to style it the way we want anyway. Select all of the text again and click on normal. This is setting it to what Word considers the normal settings for text. Now we're going to start to reformat a little bit. The first one is the student name um, through assignment name. We're going to make that no spacing and we're going to align it to the right hand side. The website plan is the title of this document. Now title is not really in the hierarchy of headings the way that we are used to and you'll see how we might have to change this when we go to a different document. But I'm going to go ahead and use um, title and then said document but when we go to a different piece of software. Then for description I'm going to use heading one because it's the first heading. Now there is a space in between these and this space we could remove if we wanted. Usually best practice is to change the spacing between items via the, the items themselves, meaning that this uh, H1 would say there's a certain amount of space before it that nothing else can be in, rather than us going in and, and manually putting in white space. So now I'm going to go to overall goals, make that H1, specific features H1, I'll remove that extra space here. Now I know that this is supposed to be a list, so I'm going to go ahead and make that a list. Target audience will also be an H1. And then these other two ones are paragraphs, and I might go ahead and just remove any extra spaces that we have there. Now we've done the, the major formatting of just making it um, have title tags, or let's say heading tags, and then we have normal text, and then a list. Really simple at this point. Now we're going to start to add a little bit more. I'm going to zoom up by holding down the control key and zooming up with my mouse wheel a little bit. And this way you'll see, of course, anytime we see this kind of red um, squiggly line in Word, it says there's some sort of mistake that we might want to fix. So let's go ahead and fix that one really quickly. And we're going to take a look at this next thing, classic autism. This is a keyword. So let's go ahead and make it bold. Now you can also use Control-B rather than the pop-up editor here. So I can do control B and pervasive development, non-delay, otherwise specified. That's a long one, but I'll go ahead and make that bold as well. Let's see, autistic like me dot org seems to be linking to a website. So I'm going to go ahead and link that, make that a hyperlink. By doing that, I'm going to right click, choose hyperlink, and then put in the address. This should be HTTP colon slash slash um, autistic dot org. Now this is not really a, a real website, but at least we can um, use something. Now if we wanted to um, find a different word that we wanted to um, link to, for example, let's see, I, I remember how one somewhere, maybe I'll just do that classic autism. I think that's what I have. I could find a website that has that, it happens to be right here, and I could link people to that by copying that with control C, so copy, go back to my Word document, go back to hyperlink by right-clicking, 
and now I can paste that link. So it's very easy to add links to websites as well within the document. And you can see this one's bold and a link, and this one is just regular with a link. Now some other things that we could do at children's ages 6 through 12, maybe that could be, whoops, maybe that could be italic, and we can use control I to do that where they are different by their parents. Maybe I'll make autistic children are where they are different. I'll make that control I, which is italic as well. And it doesn't really matter exactly in this tutorial what you make italic. It's just to understand that these are things that you're trying to, to learn when it comes to formatting. Now, that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and save this document by saving it into my um, browse. Let's go into my temp on the desktop. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a name. So this should be website plan autistic like me dot org even. And I can go ahead and save that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and look at a different piece of software that we can do the exact same kind of formatting with, and that's Google Docs. Now, you already have this if you have a Google account, um, which you do through school. And if you go to Google Docs, here's basically what it looks like. At first, you won't think that you can actually add things, but if you look in the bottom right, you'll be able to add a new document. I want to point this out that it's a little different than Drive, because in the Drive, you see New in the top, and that allows you to create a document there as well. Just something to be aware of. Okay, now that we have this, I'm going to go ahead and paste, well, actually, let me copy and paste that text again. I'm going to copy that and paste that text in here. And we'll do basically the same thing. I'm just going to select all that text and make sure that it's, click. I click on normal. Then I'm going to take this, align it to the right. Oh, I don't want all of it, so... Looks like we might have to do a little bit of editing here and there. I'm going to take this one, though, make it a title. Ah, see, there are some issues when you copy and paste text. So sometimes you have to back up and then do a new return. What this does is it clears any idea of the text being linked together. It's kind of a pain when you're reformatting text, but this is just what you have to do. So there's my title. Here's going to be my H1. There's my normal text. I'll use this one, make it an H1 as well. Specific features, H1. Whoop. Let's make that normal text. So we have to do those returns where we need them. And that's an H1. Now, I could continue. Let's make that, which is normal text. Now I could also make items bold and italic and links and everything else. If you want to select text and make it a link, you can right click, go ahead and choose link, and then copy and paste in the link here. What's nice is it actually does a search in here as well, which I think is really kind of cool in um, Google Docs. Then the next thing that we need to do is go ahead and give this a name. So I'm going to copy the website plan up there, go up to the top here, and call it Website Plan Autistic Like Me. So I'm not going to continue with the formatting of the page except for this one item just to save a little bit of time here. But obviously it's a little bit more troublesome at first in here, but you can get it to look pretty much the same. I do want to point out one thing though, and that is that your styles for the H1s and H2s and all that will not look exactly like mine. And that's because I've overwritten mine. If you change something about these styles, so I might use Open Sans and change it to a different color, um, I'll use purple just for the heck of it, then what you can do is you can overwrite or update whatever styles you want here, um, and then it will actually apply to the entire document, which is really cool. Then, if you really like the styles you've set up, you can go to the bottom and you can save these as your default styles so the next time you create a word, a document in Google Docs, you can use the exact same formatting. And I really highly suggest this because you want to create 
a series of styles that look good and that you can go back to every single time um, and have basically the same looking documents um, as you go forward. And uh, I really highly suggest that. One of the other things I love about Google Docs, of course, is that this thing is saved forever in your Google Docs. You don't have to carry around a USB or anything like that. It really makes it easy um, to save your documents and go from one computer to another. Now, what where things are a little bit different is saving things out to submit for your assignments. When you're in Word, you already know. You've saved out a document. You're ready to go. Now, you can export this, and if you export it, you can create a PDF, and a PDF is really good as well. The reason why is because a PDF will keep you the exact look that you have in fonts, even if you've used some sort of custom fonts or something like that, and those styles will be set. By the way, I should have pointed out in Word, if you do change the styles, or the, one of the reasons you even use styles is because these styles are easy to change. If you want to quickly just kind of go over the different styles um, in the design panel, you'll see, or design ribbon, I guess, you'll be able to see that you can quickly change the look of your document. And if you want to update one of these things, let's say that you decided that you, all of the headings should be green instead. Now you could actually update that. If I go back to home, I could update that and modify update the title to match the selection which is kind of the exact same thing that we were doing in um, Google Docs. Anyway back in Google Docs we've got our document here I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to the the style that I have set up and now what I want to do is download this and I can download it as a Word document or you can also download it as a PDF and the benefit again of the PDF is that it's now going to save out and not change the formatting. It will look just like this when you open up that PDF. However you do it, as a Word document or PDF, doesn't really matter. But formatting documents um, and having it be really nice, clean um, formatting and, and web formatting, everything aligned, and using these styles is the essential part of doing it. And of course, writing the content so that people will actually read it and scan it effectively is also, of course, the goal. So let me know if you have any questions on that, and go format some professional-looking documents. Thanks.